Origin Jan, so welcome to the reaction. This is Quiet Supersonic Jet Takes Flight NASA's X 59. Now, why is this special? Is supersonic special? No, it's not. This is special because it's designed to not have a sonic boom. What, what happens when you go faster than speed of sound? You have a sonic boom. That's, this is why commercial planes don't go supersonic. The end. All right. You can't have sonic booms happening in commercial flight all the time over land. There's a reason behind that. This will open the door to supersonic flights. Going even faster than people. I mean, I can already see this happening. This is next generation of things. Commercial flights are insanely common. It's way too many flights happening right now as we speak. All of that will become even, you know, like shorter times, even shorter flights. Okay, going somewhere takes like 10 hours. Now it will take like three hours. Going from place to place takes two hours. Now it will take 30 minutes. I can just see this next advancement of things, right? So yeah, the, obviously like everything, it starts with NASA because why not? Most of the modern tech comes from NASA with Apollo program. So might as well. Let's watch one. Our next story is about a plane. It flies faster than sound and it doesn't make the explosive noise that we've heard before. It claims to break the sound barrier quietly. It's something that scientists have tried to achieve for decades. The concept, of course, is called supersonic flight. In other words, traveling faster than sound. That is supersonic. And what's the speed of sound? More than 1,200 kilometers per hour, or Mach 1, as they call it. When an aircraft hits that speed, 1,200 kilometers per hour, it creates a massive shock wave. This is known as a sonic boom. In the past, that boom was so loud that countries banned supersonic flights over land. But now NASA is trying to change that. Yes, loud. Yes, flew an experimental jet. It's not about loud. Supersonic booms can literally damage your eardrums, blow out windows. It's not just about like, oh, it's inconvenient. It's dangerous. A jet that is designed to turn that deafening boom into a soft thump. And if it works, it could change how the world flies. Here's a report. History? For more than a century, a flight has been a race against time. From the first propeller planes to the jet age, humanity's wait goal- Wait a minute, wait a minute, what was that? What was the plane? Oh my God. The propeller supersonic plane. <laughs> I remember factors and video on that. That shit is insane. All was simple. To go faster. And in the 1970s, we reached that dream. Concord. It was called the supersonic flight. Supersonic means flying faster than sound. Supersonic. That means more than 1,200 kilometers per hour, or Mach 1. At that speed, a plane outruns its own sound waves. Those waves collide behind it and hit the ground as a thunderous shock, the sonic boom. Two planes defined that era. In the West, it was the Concorde, British and French engineering at its peak. In the East, the Soviet Tupolev Tu-144, the first jet in the world to fly supersonic. Both were technological marvels. Both promised to change how humans traveled. But there was one problem, the noise. That sonic boom was deafening. People on the ground complained of windows shaking and buildings rattling. The backlash grew quickly. In 1973, the United States banned overland supersonic flight. Some other countries soon followed. Supersonic travel was confined to routes over water. I still don't get it. Like, okay, first of all, don't go supersonic unless you're really high, uh, you know, above that, you know, like very top atmospheric level, right? Then you can go supersonic. As you're about to descend, because uh, destination is coming close, don't go supersonic. I, I don't get it. How, how was that a problem? I don't know.
water. For a while, the dream survived, but only just. By the turn of the 21st century, the era eventually ended. For years since then, research has been underway to solve the problem of noise in supersonic flight. And this week, that question was finally tested. NASA's experimental jet, the X-59, took to the skies over California. The jet is built by Lockheed Martin, okay, so a company uh, known for... I, I don't get it, I don't get it. If it's built by Lockheed Martin, how is NASA's plane? Or Lockheed Martin is just a tool that NASA used to do research, scientific, you know, like all the implementation and just use Lockheed Martin's engineering or engineers to build it. Is that what you're saying? So Lockheed Martin's engineer, but NASA's engineer on top of it. Makes sense. Designing stealth aircraft. It's a narrow, needle-shaped jet, which is nearly 30 meters long. Every curve is designed to reshape sound. Instead of a boom, it's built to make a soft thump. No louder than a car door closing. That's the breakthrough NASA is chasing. How, how would that work again? Would they dissipate the sonic boom somehow? If that's the case, like uh, in the simplest physic, physics terms, things don't just go anywhere. So if it dissipates, wouldn't that create certain resistance and heat up the plane? Uh, how are they achieving this? Over the coming months, the X-59 will fly over selected American communities. Microphones on the ground will record its sound. Residents will report what they hear. That data will help regulators decide if quiet supersonic travel can finally return over land. Yeah. You know, people, you and your homes, like, tell us how, how you feel. Uh, okay. Bang, everything blows up. Ah, it didn't work. Back to square one. And everybody's looking around like, what the fuck? <laughs> In June this year, the U.S. government took the first step. An executive order directed the Federal Aviation Administration to rewrite the old rules that have banned supersonic flight for years. Wait a minute, Trump gave out the executive order just to do this? Okay, Trump gave the order about like nuclear testing beginning as well. Uh, yeah, so that is something. Years. And aviation companies are already preparing. Boom Supersonic, based in Colorado, has tested its Boom. prototype the XV-1, which broke the sound barrier earlier this year. Its future aircraft, the Overture, aims to fly passengers at nearly twice the speed of today's planes. But the next generation of supersonic jets will only succeed if they can fly fast, without disturbing those below. That's the challenge the X-59 is built to solve. Its mission is not commercial, but scientific, to collect the data that could shape the rules of tomorrow. Yeah, I, I don't think this is going to work for commercial because it's not viable. It's impractical in a lot of ways, the way it's shaped, right? Like, I don't, I don't see companies running towards this. They would rather take slower planes, but with like, you know, like proper like boss looking element that nowadays planes have, 747, 787, things like that. This feels impractical to me. Like, I don't think they would like clamoring just to get this. Still, big questions remain. But for now, the X-59 marks a beginning. A quiet step towards a faster future. Because the next stage of flight may not start with a boom, but with a soft thump. Yeah. See, the, the way it's shaped, the dart shape that it has. See, like, if you want to implement this in commercial way, you need really big plane and, like, very long plane. Like, it's, it's, I don't know, man. Just fitting passengers into a thing, you need to scale that shit up. Yeah, I don't see that happening. Well, who knows? Like, the technology usually goes towards something that you never know. That's how science works. So, yeah, this is, this is always good. NASA doing what it's supposed to do. Aeronautics, this is what NASA's supposed to do. So, this is good. Alright, well, if you like my channel, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.